down a thousand times. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'm standing right here. Demons all around, but I ain't got no fear. Welcome to the show, everybody. Fantasy football is here. We are in full force, and I'm here to give you guys a massive episode. We are talking about the top 10, count them, top 10 fantasy football league winners for 2023. I've got the list in front of me. I'm excited to dive in. Now, I did another one on league winners recently on five sneaky league winners. Go back, check that out. If you've not subscribed to this number one fantasy football podcast, what are you doing? Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. I've linked it here. You guys know how to hit the link right here below. And I've linked below, guys, the 16-round draft solution. Secure the solution. Secure the championship, guys. You'll be light years ahead of the consensus, the consensus, and your league mates. I'm talking light years ahead of them, guys. 16 rounds is the game changer. All the optimal players are drafted each round. Sleepers, breakouts, Cheat sheet, everything there for you. Video training. I go over all the optimal players to draft in each round. Rankings are dead. Solution is the best way to win your leagues, okay? And smash that thumbs up and drop a league winner below. Love to get your feedback. So if you've if been following the channel, you guys make sure you guys turn on that bell because I've been delivering every morning. A lot of people saying they're very happy with the content every morning. Jimmy's been on. Gwen's been on. Tim's been on. It's been really exciting to be delivering you guys content daily as we get into the fantasy football season. So I'm excited, guys. Fantasy football is finally back. So make sure you guys are turning on the bell and making making sure that you are interactive and following on the socials as well at Fantasy Football Counselor. A lot going on, guys. I want you guys completely tapped in and totally plugged in so you guys can have that advantage over the consensus, over the consheepses, okay? Now we're talking league winners here. I got a list of 10. First of all, we got to kind of define what a league winner is, okay? Because there's a lot of different definitions. It's a little subjective. So I'm going to be a little specific here for you, okay? Really, a league winner in summary, in pre- pretty much in brief, I should say, is somebody that anchors your team and gives you guys consistent point throughout the season. Now, last year, you could say, well, you know, a guy that came on near the end of the season was my league winner. For example, I drafted midseason last year. And Hertz was really crushing for me. I, I, I did the AJ Brown Hertz stack midseason, ended up winning my league along with a guy like Kenneth Walker was on my team. So you could say that, yeah, those guys won me my league. So it could be even a big name player. So I'm giving you a mix of like big name players, some rookies here when I go over this list of league winners, but it's really somebody that anchors your team and consistently gives you points that helps you win your leagues. I mean, that's pretty much simple. Again, it could be a person that comes on, like I said, last three weeks or the person that even comes on in the championship week and wins your league and puts up 40 points. I don't really consider that a league winner because he he's more of a game winner, right? He's, he's a week winner instead of a league winner. We're not talking DFS. We're talking year long here so we want league winners meaning that they are consistent through the entire season relatively consistent okay and this list will give you guys that are i think going to be you know some of them are going to have major upside some of them are going to be really consistent some of them may kind of have some boomer bust games but it's up to you guys to decide because that's what makes fantasy so fun is that you know it is a little speculative with certain players uh some of it is subjective but i've actually looked at players that are in a good position to succeed. And that's very important, right? Position to succeed is crucial. All right, let's go through right through it. And I'm going to hit you guys with the first league winner here. And this one is a tight end 23. Yes, a tight end 23. I just recently posted this guy on my Instagram. If you're not following Instagram, go do that at Fantasy Football Counselor. The guy I'm talking about number one here is Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta could actually be a league winner. Let me tell you why. This guy's a big body receiver drafted in the second round by the Detroit Lions, okay? First and foremost, the Lions, I think, are going to be a good team. I just found out recently they sold out all their season tickets, and apparently Detroit Lions fans are very excited. I'm excited for fantasy as well for the Lions, but when I look at a guy like Sam Laporta, I'm all about opportunity, okay? You got to take a look at the situation. Now you say, well, rookie Joe, rookie tight ends don't really do it. They're not really guys that, you know, come out and really crush it. Kyle Pitts had a good rookie season. Friar Muth had a de- decent rookie season, but it's very few and far between, which is actually true. But when you're looking at a later round tight end, which I explained the 16 round draft solution, when you look at a later tight end, you want a guy with like massive upside. So I typically take a tight end that's safe, maybe a Higby, and then I back him up with an upside guy like a Laporta or maybe even a t- uh, second year player like a Kate Auden or someone like that. But I do love the upside at, at Laporta for many reasons. Number one, high draft capital. So this is huge. The Lions actually... 
drafted him with very high draft capital means they they want to use him. Number two, Hawkinson's gone. There's going to be a void of at least ninety to hundred targets. They were kind of they they were actually going not kind of going towards Hawkinson's way. So now you've got an opportunity there. For him, there's a void. There's an opening, okay? Not to mention he is getting first-team reps. He's pretty much been, from what I'm hearing from training camp, that he has been like the second target to Jared Goff. And that's another reason. Jared Goff, ultra-safe, ultra-consistent. Jameson Williams out for suspension pretty much for half the season. When he comes back, who knows if he'll get suspended again (laughs) because he's been a troublemaker. Uh, So he's, he's pretty much a wash for me. I'm not drafting Williams at all. Amara is the only target, the Jameer, Jameer give check downs, and he's going to get some volume as well. But other than that, I mean, Sam Laporta is going to be a viable option. They really have no one else. He looks good in training camp. And again, this guy could be a league winner because a lot of people are sleeping on him. And he could really, really boost up and bolster up your tight end position and get you those big game, big weekly points. Maybe one or two touchdowns a week sometimes, maybe a three-touchdown week. I see it happening. I see a high ceiling for Sam Laporta, who could be a league winner and great value and a sleeper tight end. And this is what I'm telling you. This is why rankings don't help you. This is why 60 rounds draft loser does help you because I tell you these optimal players, you're able to get them and able to dominate your league instead of just having some of these guys go undrafted, okay? So very important, Sam Laporta could be a league winner. It could be a bust. But I like him a lot this year. He's in a great opportunity situation to dominate. Coming at number two here, Najee Harris. Now, a lot of people are not excited because of the recency bias. 3.8 yards per carry last year, mediocre season. But understand, Kenny Pickett is finally integrated, finally ready to go, finally ready to dominate. Kenny Pickett is in a great situation. For you know, Now he's integrated with an improved O-line. They drafted Broderick Jones with their first pick. Listen, these guys have been made drastic improvements to improve their O-line, drafting a tight end, drafting another O-line guy, I think in the later rounds, I think it was round seven or so. So they've addressed their issues. They've addressed the fact that they need a better O-line. Najee Harris working towards a contract year. He's got a lot to prove with a chip on his shoulder, and he is the workhorse back. This was a guy in his rookie season at 1,200 yards and a ton of attempts. This guy's going to get at least 250 rushing attempts as a floor eight to 10 touchdowns on the ground and no way but up based on last year. Understand is he had a foot injury last year. He was dealing with a play and get a plate in his foot. So all these things, guys, were working against Najee Harris. And he still finished around, what, 14th amongst running backs in a terrible year where they're making a quarterback change, getting integrated, getting comfortable, figuring out this offense. So now he's settled in. Great head coach with Tomlin who believes in him. Najee Harris been working out strong in the offseason, been watching the tape, and he's going to be a guy who's going to be consistent every single week. Love me some Najee Harris, okay? Can be an absolute league winner and great value. Get him in the second round, which is which is amazing, okay? I love that value. You're getting a true RB1. Now, again, one thing that hinders me with him is that 3.8, 3.9 yards per carry and that lackluster explosive you don't get that explosiveness that you get as some of the other players i'm going to mention here okay so that was that was Najee harris can be a potential league winner everything's primed to go number three here can't stop talking about this guy if you watch my video watch my content i'm relatively not excited about detroit lions players but i gotta mention this guy as well you know adding to the sam laporta stack here is jameer gibbs okay why am i excited the most explosive and fastest player on out of the NFL draft at the running back position. I think he ran a 4.36, I believe. Go take a look at his 40-yard dash, faster than Bijan. Uh, listen, Jameer Gibbs is in a great position to succeed. He is everything that they wanted DeAndre Swift to be. And I keep telling everybody this, okay? He is a better player than DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift absolutely sucks. And everybody told you to draft DeAndre Swift in the first round last year. He was a top eight running back in PPR. I was the only one telling you years to wow me. I'm not wowed with DeAndre Swift. Yet everybody, every magazine, every outdated consensus rating. I don't know if you have my magazine with me here. I had it laying down here. I got rid of it. I think I burned it. Uh, but yeah, they had Swift as a top eight guy. I was telling you, avoid him, avoid him, avoid him. Here's the, here's the amazing thing, guys. The Lions draft this guy in the first round, and they want him to be everything that Swift wasn't. They want that pass catching back. They want that guy that can line up on the outside. They want that guy that can run on the inside. He is going to be all over the field. He's going to get you those explosive plays in the open field, check downs, open field, break away for a huge run. This is a guy who's going to be a PPR monster. I think he's better than Alvin Kamara potentially in his prime. I've watched a tape on him. I've studied him. He looks amazing, okay? This guy can and should be a league winner. And here's the here's the amazing thing. You get to get this guy in the third round. Not the first round like DeAndre Swift last year. You get him in the third round. 
absolutely love Jameer Gibbs as part of a robust RB strategy. I've got him as my RB3 on my teams. Bottom line. Or you can go running back, ace wide receiver like an Amon Ra, unless you don't want to stack another line. Maybe a Garrett Wilson in there and then go Jameer Gibbs and then maybe a Damian Pierce in the fourth round. I love that. You're still getting your three workhorse running backs prime for volume and you're factoring an ace wide receiver in the mix. But Jameer Gibbs, definitely fantasy football league winner for 2023. Potential upside. Obviously, Montgomery is a bit of a hindrance. But that guy, lackluster, years to wow us were not wowed. Even though they, they acquired him, they wouldn't have drafted Jameer Gibbs with high draft capital if they believed in Montgomery. His time is gone. He's lackluster. He's average. The future is here with Jameer Gibbs, okay? Number four here, love him, Calvin Ridley. Listen, I talked about him in a lot of videos. Love the upside. Love the speed. Love the explosiveness. Love the bounce back. Love the chip on his shoulder. And love the quarterback. I'm not going to spend too much time here on Calvin Ridley other than the fact that he is a true wide receiver one. They don't have a true wide receiver one. When they brought in Kirk last year, he was never a true wide receiver one. He just never was. Now Lawrence has a true wide receiver one. He's settled in. He's integrated. No way but up. And I was hearing Trevor Lawrence is actually bulking up. He put on some muscle, which is really good to hear. And another thing that I like with the new quarterback show on Netflix, he says he's not ready for that yet, which I like. Again, this guy settled down, got like Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence. These guys are totally settled in. They're focused on their career. They don't care about the Hollywood stuff. They are focused. They're settled in, honed in and focused. I'm looking for a monster year from Trevor Lawrence and a big beneficiary of that is Calvin Ridley, who's coming off in round three to four. You're getting yourself a wide receiver one later so again you go running back running back calvin ridley and you don't have to invest that first or second round draft capital on a wide receiver and you're still getting a true wide receiver one with a massive ceiling and potential league winning upside calvin ridley okay coming at number five here this one's a risky one but there i'm just something telling me there's an upside there and here's the amazing thing first of all let me tell you who it is it's, it's christian watson now here's the deal with the situation Jordan Love, I think he's going to be solid. I think he is the future. I think he's going to be safe. He's going to be productive. Similarly to uh, C.J. Stroud in, in Texas, right? In uh, Houston, sorry. What you got there is a situation where you got guys like John Mechie and Tank Dell. You got Now you got Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. These wide receivers, one of them is going to be a wide receiver one on both teams. Maybe it's Romeo Dobbs. Maybe it's Watson. Maybe it's John Mechie. Maybe it's Tank Dell or Nico Collins. But what's happening is these guys are falling. So who is it? And that's the thing. Nobody really knows, but I'm hearing Romeo Dobbs is a number one target pretty much for Jordan Love. He's really gravitating to him. So maybe it is. I should be swapping this name out with Romeo Dobbs as a league winner over Christian Watson. And in most leagues, I may want to consider drafting Romeo Dobbs later because I get him for value instead of a higher draft capital in Watson. But something's telling me that Watson is the, the better athlete, the more athletic person. But I'm wondering if the volume is going to go to Dobbs. Bottom line is this, you stack a couple of these guys later and you've got yourself a wide receiver one with massive league winning upside that everybody's sleeping on. A Watson, a Dobbs, a Mechie, a Tank Dell. And there's other uh, wide receivers, maybe even Alec Pierce, right? With Richardson, we don't even know how well he's do. Well, how well he'll do Richardson, right? With the Colts. But when I look at Watson, I see a ton of upside. I see a ton of decent value. I mean, I saw him come off as early as a third round, a little expensive. I'd like to, for him to fall a little bit because of this uncertainty. But there is that upside because nobody really knows how much upside, you know, uh, Jordan Love has. But I think there's a ton of upside here. I think there's a ton of value here. Love it. Christian Watson, potential league winner, okay? Number six, going back to that conversation, we already had this talk. Trevor Lawrence, big-time league winner. And, again, I've said this. I'm going to continue to say this in every video because nobody else is addressing this. You want to anchor your team with an ace quarterback. So coming at number six, league winner here, Trevor Lawrence, okay? Trevor Lawrence value you get him rounds five to seven depending on your league i think he's gonna come off as early i think he's typically coming off around five at a 12 person redraft now in a super flex you're gonna spend a second round pick or a late first round because everybody scoops up those quarterbacks so i told you that trevor lawrence is a league winner and again he's great value so this is the year i'm gonna say it again where there's so many question marks at quarterback. Aaron Rodgers to a new, new team. Russell Wilson, has he fallen off? Deshaun Watson coming off, coming back from those massages. You got C.J. Stroud, rookie quarterback. You got Anthony, uh, Anthony Richardson. You got all these guys, these rookies coming in. Jordan Love. Like, what's going on? Washington's quarterback, right? Like, I mean, there's so much uncertainty at this position that I cannot express to you enough how much you need an ace quarterback. Whether you want to go the third, second, third round, again, Allen or Hurts, that's up to you guys. Or whether you want to wait a few more rounds and get a, a Herbert, 
and a uh, Trevor Lawrence. That's up to you. I still think Lamar Jackson's of the world and Justin Fields are risky, but they've got that ceiling. But that's where you feel a little safer with the Trevor Lawrence pick. Love, love, love me some Trevor Lawrence. Massive up league winning upside. Great volume going towards Ridley this year. Love this connection. I think this could be a great connection, okay? Coming at number seven here, we're talking Brees the Beast Hall. At the time of this recording, Dalvin Cook is hovering around that offense. He's looking at possibly joining the team. Has not officially signed on. But when you look at a guy like Brees Hall, the ceiling is there, the upside is there, and I think he's exactly where he needs to be in regards to his healing. Should be ready for week one. Will he be running 100%? No. They drafted Israel uh, Abakanada. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Izzy in the fifth round. They got Michael Carter. I don't think they need Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook wants a lot of money, which again, if I'm the Jets, I've got the best running back in the NFL, arguably, in Brees Hall. Why would I need to look at Dalvin Cook, who's washed up and at the tail end of his career? No, thank you. Brees Hall, and I've got Carter and Izzy to cover me until Brees Hall gets to 100%, which I should be, which should be around week three to five, should be good to go. Listen, Brees Hall could be an absolute league winner. Round two to three draft value, typically end of round two. He is a risky pick, especially if Dalvin Cook comes in, who's going to steal a lot of volume from him. At the time of this recording, if Brees Hall stays on his own, there's no Dalvin Cook, this could be massive league winning upside, especially near the mid to end of the season. This guy is going to come on and going to crush it, okay? Coming, coming in at number eight, this is a big one here. Before I do, guys, make sure you grab that 16-round draft sushi because this is outside-the-box thinking. Nobody's talking on this level. They're just copying and pasting rankings. That's not going to help you guys win your league. So make sure you guys grab the 16-round draft sushi. I've linked it below. You'll be light years ahead of the competition. Use code SMASH to save. But I'm telling you guys, 16 rounds is the game changer, all right? Next guy, number eight here, ripping through this. Jonathan Taylor, who's having contract issues at the time of this recording. Er, um, Jim Ursay does not want to pay him. He hasn't made any promises to pay him. If that's the case, you know, you got to wonder how Jonathan Taylor is going to be. I still think he's going to be motivated because he's going to have a chip on his shoulder and prove everybody wrong. Now, if he doesn't perform, that's going to look really bad for other teams that could possibly want to acquire him. So if the Colts decide to keep him, if he stays on the team, you got to understand that he's got to perform on a high level for him to get a contract either with the Colts or another team. So I'm not really sold on him holding out or just giving a lack lost your performance he has to perform he has to give it his all coming off and you know a bad year last year i mean you got to show yourself you didn't you didn't do too well last year you got to pick back up and show the league that you are the best running back in the nfl and that you could do it so jonathan taylor could be a league winner his adp is now dro- you know dropping a little bit in mock drafts he's falling to the second round which is pretty remarkable if you can get b john and get jonathan taylor as your one-two punch Pretty amazing. So if he falls, let them buy the recency hype. But I, I I believe he still performs. He is riskier. So if you do draft to make sure you have a robust RB strategy plan in place. But I still think he's got to perform this year and have a mega year to prove the NFL that he is the man and get paid. All right. I know running backs are going through a hard time. It comes with the, with the position, all right? Number nine here, I've talked about him in a lot of videos, and so have the people that have come on my show, talked about him, Chris Alave. I mean, it goes without saying that Michael Thomas is washed up. Michael Thomas coming out and saying, hey, I'm going to have a chip on my shoulder. I'm going to come back and perform. I'm not sold on that. You know, you got Derek Carr who made, you know, Adams a huge fantasy-relevant guy last year, 180-plus targets. Chris Olave, young. 1,000 yards receiving last year with crappy quarterbacks like Andy Dalton. Gets an upgrade at the quarterback position, a massive upgrade. A guy that's going to feed him consistently. Listen, I love Olave, possible league winner. And again, third round value for a wide receiver one. This is what I'm saying. You can still wait. You still want to get that running back round one or two. Load up, and you can still get value in Olave round three, okay? And there's tons of other wide receiver ones you can get later on okay so chris alave league winner and the final one here guys make sure you guys smash thumbs up if i give you guys value i know i have smash thumbs up really helps the channel and there is more league winners okay these are just 10 that really jumped out at me that was like wow these guys could actually be really boomy big consistency boom upside they jumped out at me but there's so many more league winners if you want all the answers guys grab the 16 round draft solution also join the patreon group patreon.com forward slash FF counselor. Join the fantasy front line sleepers. Uh, you get everything. Exclusive videos, all my sleepers, breakouts. I talk about it, guys, exclusively to you guys where I won't share on social media. And not to mention, guys, you get the in-season 
access to waiver wire starts and sits, optimal DFS plays, exclusive lives, videos, all the perks, guys. Patreon.com forward slash FF Counselor. All right, join the front lines, guys. Let's go. And number 10 here, guys, league winner. We're talking Drake London. He's the only guy there. That's all I got to say about the situation. Desmond Ritter, another guy when we're talking quarterbacks. What we don't know, Jordan Love, CJ Stroud, we don't know about these guys. But that's where you get the value with Drake London, who is now settled in. And he's had some time to build with him at the end of last season with his quarterback, right? Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter is going to be efficient. I don't think he's going to throw a lot of interceptions. He's going to be safe, solid. And as long as that volume is going to Drake London, Drake London is big enough and strong enough to bring the ball down. Whether Even if he's underthrown, if he's overthrown, he can leap up to get the ball. He's a big body receiver. I'm not sold on Kyle Pitts. And now with the addition of Bijan, you got Bijan Robinson, who's going to be distracting the defenses, forcing some stack box situations, opening things up for Drake London. So this is huge, guys. Drake London is it's prime for opportunity, prime for volume, and they don't have another wide receiver. He is the guy. And he came out of this NFL 2022 draft unscathed. Nobody touched him, right? They didn't draft another ace wide receiver. He is the man. Falcons believe in him. Bijan, Ritter, and Drake London are the stars on this team. And you can get this guy in round five, a true wide receiver one, all right? There you have it. Ten league winners. Sam Laporta. It's a bit of a, a long shot here, but the ceiling is there. I explain why. Najee Harris, Jameer Gibbs, Calvin Ridley, Christian Watson, Trevor Lawrence. I got that stack in one of my one of my leagues, one of my big money leagues. Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley stack. Loving it. Uh, and always back yourself up with a quarterback. If you have Lawrence, back him up, okay? So Trevor Lawrence, Brees Hall, Jonathan Taylor, Chris Olave. And Drake London, guys. Big time league winners, massive upside, and some of these guys, immense great value because of some of the uncertainty around them. All right. If this is making sense to you, grab the 16 round draft solution. I give you guys everything on a silver platter, tons of information. You'll be light years ahead of the competition. Thumbs up, drop a league winner below, and make sure you guys subscribe. Content coming out to you guys daily. I appreciate you guys. Fantasy is here. Let's go. We'll talk soon in the next video. I'm out.